birth mothers were chosen to breed the new people and there were people assigned to teach them to grow crops and make crafts so on and so forth and long after they were dead they remained gods to the common person and when they were having a hard time they would pray to their spirits just like you would pray to your dead mother and father today In the Book of Enoch, forbidden admitted into the modern Bible, it describes the things this bloodline was trying to keep secret when it states, chapter 8, 1, And Azazel taught men to make swords, and knives, and shields, and breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth, and the art of working them. It goes on to say, Barakijal taught astrology, Cocobel, the constellations, Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds, Erechil, the signs of the earth, Shamshil, the signs of the sun, and Serial, the course of the moon. These things were not forbidden to help us. They were forbidden to keep us from rising up and taking back the knowledge kept secret by them. They used these things to control the people as they multiplied upon the surface of the earth in the age of the crab. The Age of the Creator. Chapter 6 And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. By the nearing of the ending of the Age of the Twin, the world was not only overpopulated, but the descendants of this bloodline were using flight. Scripture writes of the prophet Enoch, who wrote the book of Enoch, hundreds of years before Noah's flood. Noah was the grandson of Enoch and talked to Enoch. The Holy Bible has many references to this pre-flood book of Enoch. Therefore, Noah must have brought the book of Enoch with him. The book of Enoch was found in 1773 in Ethiopia. In it, it speaks of the first time Enoch saw the white man and his machines of hidden knowledge. Their faces were shining like the sun. Their eyes, too, were like a burning light. In what Christians refer to as the Old Testament, there are, in fact, several accounts of God and his angels visiting the earth. Sometimes, these visitations are accompanied by tremendous noise and clouds of billowing smoke. In the book of Ezekiel, for example, the prophet claims that he witnessed a visitation by heavenly beams coming down from the skies aboard a fantastic flying Almost machine. Almost every religion has similar stories about deities with spectacular powers and abilities who come to earth and directly influence the lives of men. tales that they're making up, fantasy, or these physical real events, and they're trying to describe them as the best that they could. That seems to make more sense to me. During World War II, American troops created air bases on remote Pacific islands. To natives who had never witnessed advanced technology, the sight of giant metal birds touching down looked to them as if the gods themselves had turned the earth into a planetary pit stop. They would see these big planes land, and, and it was all technology that... Uh, the, just out of the sky. They didn't know how these things worked, but they could see them land. And what they liked about it was they were getting free stuff. They were getting cargo. Suddenly, when the war was over, all these airstrips were abandoned and everyone left. And the islands scratched their heads and they all said to themselves, wow, wasn't it great when those, all these planes came out of the sky and gave us free cans of corned beef and stuff? We really liked that cargo. Entire religions sprung up from this, where priests actually said, yes, you know, uh, that was our dead ancestors sending us cargo. So what they did then was they began going to the old airstrips and they would build mock wooden airplanes to try and get those planes to come back from the sky and deliver the cans of corned beef to them again. Of all the Indian petroglyphs, 
none perhaps is quite so unexplainable as these. No one has been able to decipher them. Los Angeles engineer Charles Ruggles thinks he has discovered the key to the mysterious petroglyphs. These are scientific drawings. They could be taken right out of a physics textbook. They show sine waves, they show triangle waves, they show square waves, uh, they show electromagnetic circuitry, they show switching, they show almost everything that we could think of in a modern electronics and electromagnetic laboratory. One of the most unusual reports in recent years tells of a discovery made near the Coso Mountain Range in Southern California. As represented here for In Search Of, three rock hounds were out looking for interesting samples to add to their collections. They had already been looking for hours that hot day in July. What they found looked innocent enough, a geode common to that area. Yet, it somehow seemed different. Later, after they saw the rock in half, they felt they had made a unique discovery. That inside was a strange ceramic-like material resembling some electrical device, like the spark plug. How old was it? X-ray results were published, and they were astonishing. The object did not appear to be naturally formed. No one today can explain its existence. In 1929, historians discovered a map which had been painted onto a piece of gazelle hide. They traced the document back to a 16th century Turkish admiral named Piri Reis. But in stark contrast to other maps dating back to that time, the map depicts land masses that were still, as yet, unexplored. It shows the coast of Antarctica as it exists under the current ice cover. Now that's really pretty amazing because it would tend to indicate that the map was made at a time when Antarctica was ice free. When cartographers superimposed the Piri Reis map over a modern map of the world, they were amazed to discover that the ancient chart was fantastically accurate in the most minute of details. But how could the creators of a centuries-old map have known of mountains or rivers that had yet to be discovered? Throughout the ancient Sanskrit epics of India, there are numerous descriptions of vimanas, or mythical flying machines. One of these accounts even dates back over 5,000 years. In other Sanskrit texts, such as the Mahabharata, the Rig Veda, and the Ramayana, there can be found descriptions of Vimana measuring as wide as 100 feet, and often equipped with the capabilities of modern aircraft. One Vimana produced a shaft of light, which when focused on a target, consumed it with its power. It's like a Buck Rogers or Flash Gordon movie from the 30s. They read like the wildest science fiction. People are flying around in airships called the Manas, blasting each other and having aerial fights, destroying entire cities. And the crazy thing is that all of those stories are totally accepted in the modern society of India. Colombia, there were thousands of tomb artifacts that look like modern day airplanes. It has fixed wings, it has a fuselage, and it has an upright tail fin, which is not intrinsic to nature, but it is intrinsic to modern day aerodynamics.